Okay. There's a part of yoga practice that I think we should start out our class or start out reflecting on, reflecting on. And the word I want us to think about in starting, starting ourselves out is this word solitude. In the sixth chapter of the Gita, verse 10, it reads, so first of all, if you want to know what is the, what is the aim of our practice? What's the goal? What might be a goal? Because I don't think there's one goal. I don't think there's one goal to yoga. But if we look into the, some of the ancient texts, we can get some ideas about what our goal might include. This verse 10 reads, yoga practitioners should continue to concentrate their minds until they master their minds and bodies and thus experience a state of solitude wherever they may be. Then desires and possessiveness drop away. Desires and possessiveness drop away. So I want to focus on this word, one word, solitude, a state of solitude. What is that? What might that look like? What might that feel like for you or to you? To experience when the mind and body is under control, which is almost a problematic way of approaching yoga to think that we can control our mind or body because we're not in control. If we think we can do that, there's ego. That's ego-based thinking. But let's say we practice yoga as a means to experience solitude, right? As a means to experience solitude. Through the experience of solitude, I wanna suggest that solitude is a very nourishing place for us to be. When we experience solitude, desires and possessiveness naturally dro drop away. So we can taste solitude when we're not feeling so possessive of things or of people or of getting our way. Let's contrast that with some readings from a Catholic priest. This is a book called Out of Solitude by Henry Nouwen. And Henry Nouwen, just an amazing, amazing writer. He gives us this verse from the Gospel of Mark, which reads, that evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were possessed by devils. The whole town came crowding round the door and he cured many who were suffering from diseases of one kind or another. He also cast out many devils, but he would not allow them to speak because they knew who he was. What we are getting here, what the, the, the main point here in this section I just read is that somebody who is known as Jesus, somebody is doing a lot of work to heal others. They're putting a lot of effort into their life. Now, it says the next line, in the morning, long before dawn, he got up, left the house, and went off to a lonely place and prayed there. Went off to a lonely place and, play, and prayed there. So Henry Nouwen really picks up on this particular line, going to a lonely place. Right? In order for any of us, you don't have to be a god to benefit from this. You don't have to put yourself in the shoes of a God or God in general, but people in general, this is an example for how to live. Both the, the, the Gita and uh, the gospel are saying, they're giving us some hints about how we could orient our life in the midst of busyness, in the midst of our busy days, and the word they focus on here 
Well, the gospel uses the word lonely. The Gita uses the word solitude. And now and the Catholic priest also uses that word solitude. And I think this is a, is a important, not just a word, but of course it's a practice. Right? How do we feel a state of solitude? 